Hello and welcome back to my new video series of the third chapter on human reproduction. Reproduction as we know is important for the survival of all living things and humans are no different. Human reproduction is essential for the continuation of the human species. And in order to uh, achieve this, both male and female individuals need a set of organs and systems. So today, uh, we will learn about the male and female reproductive systems in this video. The objectives to be achieved are 1. State some characteristics of human reproduction 2. Describe the structures and functions of male reproductive system 3. Describe the structures and functions of the female reproductive system. 4. List uh, the three types of cells in the testes with their specific roles. 5. Characterize the stages of follicular development in the ovaries. And 6. Draw a labeled diagram to show the transverse section of testis and ovary. Humans can only reproduce uh, sexually by the union of egg and sperm cells. Although the reproductive system of the male and the female are different, they are structured uh, to work together in order to achieve internal fertilization. Sperms which are produced uh, by the male testes and the egg or ovum uh, which are produced by the female ovaries fuse inside the female body and whether uh, the child becomes a male or a female is determined very early during the embryo development. In humans, uh, the presence of a Y chromosome determines the sex of the baby. Normally, uh, out of the two sex chromosomes, females have two X chromosomes and uh, males have one X and one Y chromosome. Now, in human embryos, a gene on the Y chromosome activates the development of testes at about week 7 of uh, gestation or pregnancy. So, uh, the previously indifferent embryonic gonad on activation by the Y chromosome forms testes and other organs of the male reproductive system. However, uh, in the absence of the Y chromosome, the embryonic gonad uh, initiates uh, the ovary forming pathway and uh, develops the female reproductive system. Hence, it is the Y chromosome which controls the sex of an individual. Now, the ability of an uh, individual to reproduce can only be attained after passing the juvenile phase. In fact, reproductive system is the only system which gets activated at puberty. And puberty involves two kinds of change. Uh, the primary change directly involves the development of testes and ovaries, producing uh, sperms and eggs respectively. Whereas, uh, the development of the secondary sexual characteristics uh, such as enlargement of breast in females, uh, growth of pubic hair in both uh, the sexes and many other distinguishing sexual characters are considered uh, to be secondary uh, change. So, let us first take up the uh, male reproductive system. The male uh, reproductive system consists of primary sex organs which are the two testes, accessory glands uh, which includes seminal vesicles, uh, prostate gland and bulbourethral glands, accessory ducts uh, including epididymis, vas deferens, ejaculatory duct uh, and urethra and uh, the external genitalia or organ which is the penis. Penis 
penis is the external male organ used for sexual intercourse and urination. Uh, it is made up of uh, spongy tissues and blood vessels. The head of the uh, penis is covered by uh, the foreskin and in males, uh, urethra continues from the urinary bladder into the penis. And therefore, a uh, penis has two chief functions uh, in the males, which are uh, number one, uh, to pass urine and two, uh, to pass semen out of the body through the uh, urethra. The sperms which are produced in the testes are subsequently released out through the uh, accessory ducts and it's released into the epididymis through the uh, rete testis. Rete testis forms a fine network of tubules between the testes and uh, the epididymis. And epididymis is a long uh, coiled uh, tube uh, which is uh, present on the posterior or backside of each testis. Sperms which are released from the testes uh, goes into the epididermis for storage and maturation. And epididermis uh, secrete important substances that help uh, uh, for the sperm to survive and mature. And uh, the maturation time of sperms uh, can be approximately uh, about one week. And uh, the mature sperms are transported uh, from the epididermis to the, sec uh, to the two uh, vas deferens during ejaculation. So vas deferens are a pair of long thin tubes of about 30 centimeters in length, which uh, serves as a passageway for sperms uh, from epididermis into the ejaculatory ducts. Now along the way, Sperms pass through the scrotum, uh, moves upward around the urinary bladder and passes through the seminal vesicles and prostate. Uh, the sperms are pushed uh, upward uh, by the muscular contraction of the vas deferens and uh, it gets mixed uh, with the fluids of seminal vesicles. So the sperm mixed, uh, mixed with the fluids of seminal vesicles uh, is now called the semen. And uh, the ducts from the seminal vesicles uh, join with the vas deferens uh, to form a short uh, right and left ejaculatory ducts. And these ejaculatory uh, ducts transport the semen to the urethra. And semen containing sperms is fully ejaculated out of the male body through the urethra and this happens uh, by the activity of its sphincter muscles. So this process uh, of the release of semen, semen from the male body is called as ejaculation. Now about 70 to 85 percent of semen originates from the seminal vesicles which are a pair of coiled uh, tubular glands that lie behind the urinary bladders, uh, bladder. And it secretes a yellowish fluid uh, rich in fructose, prostaglandins and other nutrients. And fructose uh, serves as an energy source for semen. Now about 30% uh, of semen constitutes the prostatic fluid and a single uh, prostate gland lies below the urinary bladder and surrounds the urethra. A prostate gland secretes an alkaline fluid that neutralizes the acid found in the male urethra and in the female reproductive tract. But in some individuals, prostate tends to grow larger as uh, the male gets older. And moreover, prostate cancer is one of the most common types of cancer in men. A small percentage of uh, prostate cancer uh, also runs in families. 
Another uh, accessory glands are the bulbourethral glands, uh, also called as cowper's glands. And they are the uh, glands which are located beneath the prostate gland, uh, which measures only about 1 cm in diameter. They secrete mucus, uh, which acts as a lubricant during intercourse and also helps to neutralize the acidity in the urethra. Well, uh, the primary sex organs in the males are the two testes or what we commonly call even as testicles. Testes are oval shaped glands of about 5 cm length uh, and 3 cm uh, wide. So the testes are extra abdominal which is to say that they are located outside of the body in a pouch of skin called as the scrotum. Scrotum helps to keep the testes at around uh, 35 degrees Celsius, uh, which is about 2 to 3 degrees Celsius below the normal body temperature for the effective production of sperms. And each testis uh, is covered by a tough membrane called the tunica albuginea. And the uh, tunica albuginea uh, falls inward to form 200 to 400 of uh, testicular lobules. Each testicular lobule has uh, about one to three highly coiled uh, tibioles called the seminiferous tibioles and these are the tibioles where sperms are produced. Now there are two types of cells inside the seminiferous tibioles which are the germ cells and uh, the Sertoli cells. As the name implies, germ cells produce the sperms by a process called as spermatogenesis and Sertoli cells uh, provide nourishment to the developing sperms. And outside of the seminiferous tibioles are the Leydig cells or interstitial cells that secretes testosterone. And we are going to uh, learn uh, the details of spermatogenesis and the hormonal influence on the reproductive system in our subsequent lesson. Well, uh, let us now discuss the female reproductive system in some detail. The female uh, reproductive system uh, consists of uh, primary sex organs which are the two ovaries accessory ducts including vagina, uterus and ov ducts, uh, the external genitalia or organs which are collectively known as vulva. Vulva includes a group of structures such as mons pubis, uh, labia majora and labia minora, clitoris, uh, hymen as well as Bartholin's glands. The anterior fatty region of the vulva which uh, gets covered with pubic hair on reaching puberty is called the mons pubis. The vulva is protected by a pair of larger outer skin folds uh, called the labia majora and a pair of uh, smaller inner skin folds called the labia minora. And at the tip of the uh, labia minora is a small mass of sensitive tissue called the clitoris. And clitoris is considered to be homologous or similar to the uh, male penis. A thin uh, membrane uh, partially covers the vaginal opening and this is called as hymen. Now, uh, the state of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity as is being uh, considered by uh, some people uh, because uh, hymen can break naturally uh, during various physical activities aside from intercourse. And uh, at the opening of the vagina are the two small pea-sized glands called the Bartholin's glands. Uh, which secretes mucus uh, to lubricate the vagina. 
Now these Bartholin's uh, glands are considered to be homologous to the bulbourethral glands in males. A uh, muscular canal uh, that extends from the vulva into the uh, cervix is the vagina. And uh, vagina has three main functions uh, that is uh, it acts as a passageway for uh, the menstrual blood. It receives penis during uh, sexual intercourse and it provides passageway for child birth and hence the name birth canal to the vagina. Now, vagina also maintains an acidic pH uh, by the activity of its prominent uh, vaginal bacteria from the genus Lactobacillus. And this uh, acidic condition uh, is to uh, provide protection against infection. Uh, uterus is connected to the uh, vagina at its lowest portion through the cervix. And uh, cervix uh, does a lot of functions for us. It keeps unwanted bacteria and viruses out of our uterus. It opens and closes to let sperm in and menstrual blood out. It produces its own lubrication or mucus. And uh, the thick mucus can even form a mucus plug during pregnancy in order to prevent premature uh, delivery. While at the same time, uh, the cervix can dilate or open in order to allow the baby uh, pass from the uterus to the vagina during delivery. The uterus or uh, commonly womb uh, is a major female reproductive structure located in the pelvic region. And uterus lies uh, behind the urinary bladder and is anterior to the rectum. Uh, it's a thick walled uh, muscular organ uh, which is capable of uh, expanding in order to accommodate a growing fetus. And uterus has three main parts uh, which are fundus uh, which is the top part of the uterus. Uh, body which is uh, the part where implantation occurs and cervix which is the lower part of the uterus. Cervix is structurally and functionally uh, different uh, from the rest of the uterus. But the fundus and the uh, body of the uterus are composed of three tissue layers uh, where the outer double membrane serosal layer is called the peritoneum. And uh, the two layers uh, which are present in the middle region uh, made up of uh, smooth muscles uh, is the myometrium and uh, the inner uh, lining of the uterus which is composed of numerous uh, glands is called the endometrium. The superficial lining of the endometrium is shed during menstruation in a non-pregnant uh, female as we have learned in menstrual cycle. Now stretching from the uterus to the ovaries are the two long slender tubes called the oviducts or the fallopian tubes. They are the muscular tubes that are lined with uh, cilia and which have uh, an average length of about 11 to 12 centimeters. Uh, fallopian tube is uh, divided into uh, three major parts. Uh, in which uh, infungibulum is the funnel shaped uh, part uh, near to the ovary and uh, this has uh, a structure associated uh, which appears as a finger like, uh, finger -like uh, uh, projection uh, known as fimbri. Uh, the ampulla is the widest portion that connects isthmus to the infundibulum and this is the uh, part where fertilization usually occurs. Isthmus is a narrow section of the oviducts uh, towards uh, oviduct towards the uterus, and uh, the coordinated uh, movement of the cilia within the fallopian tube assists in the uh, tra uh, transportation of the egg from the ovaries to the uterus. And ovaries are the primary female reproductive organs. 
ovaries lie on either side of the uterus within the lower abdominal cavity and they are held in place uh, by ligaments attached to the uterus. An adult uh, ovary is about the size of an almond uh, which is about 4 cm long, uh, 2 cm wide and about 1 cm in thickness. They perform uh, two chief functions. Firstly, uh, to produce egg or ova uh, by a process called as oogenesis. And secondly, it also produces hormones which uh, regulates the female reproductive system. Uh, ovaries are covered by uh, germinal epithelium from the outside. And under this germinal epithelium uh, lies a, a thick connective tissue capsule called the tunica albuginea. The ovary uh, also consists of uh, two regions uh, where cortex is the outer region and uh, medulla forms the inner region. Cortex is more dense with various uh, follicles uh, that exist in different stages of development. Whereas medulla is a loose connective tissue region with lots of blood vessels, lymph vessels and nerve fibers. An ovarian follicle consists of a uh, developing uh, oocyte or the egg surrounded by layers of follicular cells. The follicular development includes uh, different stages such as uh, the primary follicles which are characterized with a primary oocyte surrounded by a single layer of follicular cells. Now one of the striking differences in the development of egg is the formation of primary oocyte already in the embryonic stage while it is still inside the uh, womb. And thus, all females are born with uh, the uh, primary oocyte that she can ever have uh, right from birth. Now, with the onset of puberty, under the influence of FSH hormone, which is uh, the follicular stimulating hormone, uh, the primary follicles grows along with the primary oocyte. A primary oocyte cell uh, which is surrounded by multiple layers of follicular cells forms the secondary follicle stage. And as the secondary uh, follicles uh, grow, it forms an antrum uh, which is a cavity filled with follicular fluids. And follicles uh, with a large antrum is called a tertiary follicle. Now out of the many follicles, only one tertiary follicle continues to grow and matures into a graphene follicle. And this graphene follicle uh, contains a secondary oocyte and it uh, bulges out of the surface of the ovary. Now under the influence of hormones, uh, the mature graphene follicle ruptures. And this process of rupturing of the mature graphene follicle and the release of the secondary oocyte from the ovary is called as ovulation. And uh, one secondary oocyte is normally ovulated uh, uh, every month uh, by a female. The empty graphene follicle uh, after the ovulation gets transformed into a corpus luteum. And uh, corpus luteum is a glandular uh, structure uh, which secretes uh, progesterone in large quantities as well as uh, estrogen uh, to some extent. But if fertilization doesn't occur, then the corpus luteum gets degenerated into a scar tissue called as uh, corpus albicans. All of these changes uh, occur repeatedly in the ovary. Uh, during the reproductive phase of a female. 
And finally, uh, let me give a brief account on another accessory gland, uh, which is the mammary gland. Mammary glands are present in both males and females, yet uh, they are more uh, well developed in females following puberty. Mammary glands uh, are made up of several of the mammary lobules uh, and numerous milk producing cells uh, which are embedded in uh, the uh, connective tissues. Uh, it also has adipose or fat tissues and a system of ducts that helps to transport milk to the nipple. An adult uh, female breast contains about 15 to 20 mammary lobes which houses clusters of milk secreting cells called as the alveoli. And the alveoli opens out into the uh, mammary lo uh, lobules and many of these mammary lobules joins uh, to form mammary ducts uh, which uh, further uh, joins together to form uh, many mammary ampullae. And these uh, mammary ampulla then uh, continues with the lactiferous ducts that drains uh, the milk into the uh, openings in the nipple. Unfortunately, uh, breast cancer is uh, the most common cancer in women and has also been proven to be the second leading cause of cancer death. A woman who has mutations in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes have higher risk of developing breast cancer. And uh, a family history of uh, breast cancer uh, also increases the chances of uh, inheriting breast cancer. Nonetheless, with uh, proper education and regular medical uh, attention, it can be easily prevented. So with this, I come to the end of today's presentation on human reproductive system. Till then, take care.